Your life is particularly fascinating. Mm. And I think there's a lot of stuff that people aren't aware of because we think if you sit in here now and you're a loose woman and it's, there's so much more. And if we do go, go right the way back to you as a little girl, you were growing up on a, a council estate with a, a yep. single mum, a mum who really fought hard to look after you. Yeah, yeah, she was amazing. And what mom. are your early memories of, of that time? Um, well, like, yeah, I lived on a... We, so we lived on a council estate. <gasps> you look estate. like your mum. Yeah, yeah. Oh we, lived at, we lived on a council estate, but it wasn't... It was my godparents' council house because we didn't have a council house. They were quite hard to get hold of in those yeah. days. And so we had to live with them. Um, and they had four children, two girls and two boys, but the two girls were much older and they'd moved out. But the two boys um, were both in the army. And so they would come home quite a lot and they were in Northern Ireland, they were over in Norway, Germany. Um, and one of them trained squaddies, that was his job as part of the army. And I, it probably wouldn't be allowed now, but they used to take me with them. So when I was on the summer holiday, I would be taken off on these to these squaddy training camps and hang out with all these squaddies. And I would wow. have been, I don't know, 10 or 11 <laughs> at the time, I think. Um, and they used to use me, they used to sort of like, you know when they train to take injured people off the mountain and stuff like that? They'd put me on the stretcher, I'd be like the dummy. <laughs> and they'd be lowering me off mountains. What? And I learnt to canoe. You wouldn't be allowed to do that now. No, no, but, but it was... It what, like great. A, on a helicopter or something, or carrying you, or what? No, no, like lowering. Yeah. You know, they do it manually Winsley, over mountains yeah. when oh they're rescuing people. From, I know, I know. And, and, but it, it was brilliant. And they were kind of like my male role models, because mm. I didn't have a dad. Mm. Um, and they really looked after me. They were, they were fantastic. They were about 13 years older mm. than I was. But, yeah, uh, my mum was a secretary, right. and then she decided to train to be a teacher because she wanted to earn some more money. Mm. Um, so that's what she did. But So we didn't have a great deal of money, but I have no recollection of that. Mm. I have no concept that we didn't have money mm. because I was surrounded by this great big family that we lived with and surrounded by love. So didn't and... your mum put you in some competition so that you could... Do an advertising campaign or something. No, well, Miss Pears. Does anybody remember Miss yes, Pears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum. So that picture that you saw before, or the um, if me. Well, there's that's me on the Miss Pears throne. Oh, and you can oh, see my white streak. I have um, what they call a Malin streak. I've it's grey now, but um, I had that all my life down one side of what, my that hair. What really? Yeah, um, but she entered me into Miss Pears, and I won. Uh, the, the South East region or whatever. And so six of us, we got taken to London for the week and we stayed in a hotel and we were on the news because it was a big deal, Miss Pears, in those days. Mm, um, big. And I came second. Wow. And I think we got... I won £500. Gosh, now, that, that was, was loads a lot of money. Of money in those days. So, so that would be 1960. It was 67. 67. Because you were five. I was yeah. five. God, that and, was a lot. And you could buy a house for that. Yeah, yeah no, we, but we, um, we used it to go on a world cruise. My grandfather lived in Australia. He went over to Australia as a $10 tourist in the 50s. Um, so we used it to go on a world cruise to see my grandfather. Dipping your toes into that world a little bit, is that what made you consider being an actress then? Because that, you did sort of think along those lines for a bit. Well, I, I loved acting at school. And my in, my in the sixth form, I went to a girls' school, a girls' grammar school. So I was state school educated the whole way. And then um, when we were, when I was about twelve, I always played, had to play the male part in the play because <laughs> I was tall <laughs> and I've got quite my deep voice. Um, but I loved acting. Yeah, and we used to do loads of plays. Um, Did you apply to drama school? Well, I applied to RADA, oh, yeah. and I had an audition, and I got in. But. I couldn't afford it. I mean, yeah. you, you know, oh, yeah. A, I would have had to have moved to London. I just couldn't afford to go to university or any college, mm. full stop, really. No. Mm. Um, it just, you know, you just got on with it, really. So I, the other um, fallback was to be a journalist. And from about the age of 11, I had become obsessed about being a journalist. But my school tried to put me off. They said, well, no, there aren't any women in journalism. Women don't really do that job. It's very male-dominated, you know. Why don't you try teaching or something? And I was just really... And, and actually, my mum was quite against it as well because she said, oh, there's no job security. Mm. But I was adamant. Um, so I applied to journalism college and I got in. So I went to, uh, to college in Cardiff. But you've never been out of work, though? 
Never. And mm. you, how long you've I been working for the Sun? I got my first job at 18. 30, 18. 35 years at the Sun or something? Uh, yeah, uh, 85 I joined the Sun. 85. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were the editor, the famous editor of the famous column, the Bizarre, Bizarre column. column. I was the first female editor Was of that Bizarre. before Piers Morgan? No, he was after me. After you, see? <laughs> he took over from me, actually. Yeah, so you were yeah. before him. Well, when you talk about some of those crime stories, and, and it's stories that we will all remember, um, what one affected you the most, do you think? And, and, and sadly, there are quite a few to choose from. Well, probably uh, Jamie Bulger. Mm. I did the Jamie Bulger story and I went to the funeral mm. as well and I mean that just had a terrible impact on on all of us it was just so horrible and and of course as a as a reporter you learn a lot of the detail that doesn't make the newspapers mm. because it's you know it's it's nobody wants to read that um, and the other thing I did the Rose West trial mm. she would just stare at me Gosh. like this the whole time and it, I found it very unnerving and the detail from that trial was so ghastly. And the thing that stuck with me about Rose West was that a lot of the girls that they... They picked up hitchhikers mm. and they got in that car because they saw a woman yeah. and they trusted okay. her. Oh, God. And, Oof. if anything, I think she was probably more evil than her husband. Um, and, and, and actually, the instances of two such evil people meeting each other and kind of playing off each other mm. is so statistically... Ridiculous, mm. like off the scale, but they were, yeah, they were ghastly. And obviously, he he killed himself, um, so he never got to trial. But but, but she when did. you cover stories like that, and like you say, we don't see all the detail. How do you then process that in your own life? Because yeah, I know how what you do mean. you deal with that? Yeah, I know what you mean. You because have to the take thought, it home with you. Also, when I had that was in a way why I stopped doing when I had Ellie, who's now twenty six. Um, I stopped doing on-the-road reporting for two reasons, because I was always being sent away. Sometimes mm. I'd go away for six weeks at a time. Cos once you were out abroad, the news editor would go, ''Oh, Jane's in Australia, that's near China. Let's send Jane...'' Uh -huh. You know, they just think, ''Oh, she's not in the office, let's send her from, you know, all these different places.'' Which was great in my 20s. I had some amazing experiences. Mm. But when I had a child, obviously, mm. I had to ground... Be, be, so I then became head of a department. Um, but also, the minute I had a child, I didn't want to do crime stories anymore because yeah. those they get inside your head like mm. earworms. You can't um, unsee that stuff or unknow no. it. You know it, and it's it, yeah. I, I, sometimes you would rather not know, but yeah. as a journalist, you don't have that choice. No, really, no. Mm. You're but it's Jane's job as a royal correspondent when. Well, it just all sort of changed again for you, didn't it? Yeah, a lot it was of travel a, again. A crazy, crazy part of your life. But it was a, it was a really. Um, it was like the golden ticket to get the royal correspondence job because a a because you just went to so many fascinating countries. So obviously, when they go on official tours, you go with them officially. As we always used to call ourselves, Her Majesty's Press. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and obviously, they would so we they would accommodate us. We would be given passes. Well, you travel with them as well. Yeah, because no, 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 no. Uh -huh. Well, sometimes you did. It depended. Sometimes you did. You might did be you on the ever? same plane. Uh, yes, I think I did once. Oh. Um, but other times they might be coming from somewhere else or whatever. But um, they would ha invite the press because they, as the taxpayers, they want the taxpayers to know what they're doing on these official tours because it kind of justifies, mm. you know, the, the expense of the, of the royal persons. So uh, what was the first one I did? I think I went to Nigeria mm -hmm. and Cameroon. And, as we all know, the, the, the thing that Diana was brilliant at um, was just connecting with people. Yeah. And, like she did with the, um, the AIDS, AIDS patients, patients back yeah. in the, you know, hugging everybody, etc. And this hospital didn't have any windows, cos, obviously, it's um, very airy. And there's, there's a great photograph, which I took, actually. So, Diana, you can see the back of her head on the far left there. Oh, but you yeah. can see all the photographers look yeah. wow. in through wow. the windows. That, that is kind of what it was like on a, on a royal tour every time. So, they were all there following. But then, of course, they would also sometimes be there on their holidays, which they were less pleased about. Um, and I remember we went to Necker Island, which Richard Branson owns. Um, and I had been told I was going skiing with Charles and Diana, 
And so I turned up at the airport with a suitcase full of salad pets and big sweaters. And then the news editor rang and went, no, 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 change of plan, no, Charles is going skiing. And they weren't ever that interested in Charles. Um, Diana's going to Necker. Oh. So you've got to get on a flight in an hour to the Caribbean. So I turned up in the Caribbean with a suitcase <laughs> full of ski wear, <laughs> which is completely ridiculous. Um, but again, in those days, we knew her um, royal detectives very well indeed. So we were on a, a, an adjoining island in British Virgin Islands. It was hell on earth. <laughs> um, yeah. and they Someone's would come, got to do they it. They would come over in the boat and they would say, right, on Wednesday, so this is on, like, Saturday, Diana will pose for you on the beach on the understanding that you don't come anywhere near her and, until then. And we're in this boat and the waves are like this, so the photographers have got their lenses <laughs> and they're kind of going like this in the boat. So it, our boat starts chugging back to where we're staying and we suddenly look over our shoulder and she's gone out through that hedge into the changing area behind and she came back onto the beach in the most microscopic red bikini you've Brilliant. ever seen <laughs> and bounced into the waves. But you were too far away. Yeah. They were too far yeah. away and they were all facing the wrong way. Brilliant. And, she knew that. Oh, and that was her sense of humour. So they were all, the boat nearly capsized because all the photographers <laughs> ran to the side. They were all trying to get their cameras up and she was crying with laughter. She absolutely so loved it. So did you like her? Yeah. Did you think she was... I really liked her. She, a good person. You would meet them before the... When you want, went on these world tours, they would have drinks with you, sort of like the night before the, the tour would start. And if, if, she, if you'd written something about her she wasn't very pleased about, she'd let you know. Mm. Um, but, no, she was great. And she was stunning. She was like a movie star. And I remember when we went to Indonesia, my luggage went missing. I had to buy the most frightful outfit ever. It was like pop socks, <laughs> some really horrible pleated skirt, <laughs> and one of those T-shirts that's almost like my mum and dad went to Indonesia, <laughs> and all they bought me was this lousy T-shirt. You still anyway, got it. Still so got she, it. she kept. She was crying with laughter. She went, "Look at the state of you." <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, we had to go to the school, and you always get there an hour before they do to get in position. Whatever. And all these little kids were there with their flags and they'd been told they were waiting for Lady Di, but they had no idea what she looked like. So when I got out the minibus in this terrible outfit, they all started going, Lady Di! Lady Di! So I told her that, like, I said, you know you were laughing at my outfit? She went, yeah. I said, well, they thought I was you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Yeah. That it's was fantastic. An incredible insight, really, because yeah. again, we see all of Isn't those it? pictures, and I remember so much yeah. of that yeah. footage. Yeah. yeah. And you don't think about what goes on behind that, that lens yeah. at all, as, yeah. as the yeah. viewer. You and get amazing access. And, and you, know, you go into the royal she palaces. With you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still doing that job when when she died? Well, when um, no, I wasn't. But weirdly, so the other thing I was going to say, when I joined the royal pack, as they were known, I was the only girl. So they were all very well-established male journalists. Mm. I was very nervous about it. They were absolutely brilliant with me. Um, they really looked after me. They were brilliant. And we all became firm friends. And one of them got Matt was getting married down in Kent. So I was at the wedding. Harry Arnold, who was the royal correspondent of The Sun, he was getting married. So all of the royal correspondents were at this wedding. And... Uh, at some point during the evening, we had pagers. Nobody had mobile phones yeah. then. Somebody's pager went off, and we, we'd all had a lot to drink, and they went, oh, Diana's been in a car crash in, in Paris, and she's broken her collarbone. Well, that was enough for us all yeah. to have to get back to London, because we knew that that was going to be a big story. And there was, like, one cab driver in the whole of Kent. We had to get him out of bed, because nobody could drive. We were too drunk. On our way back to London... The pager went and we were told that she died. Yeah. So we all had Gosh. to just go into our office. I get goosebumps now. Yeah, just I know. I it. do I feel still. Really, it's really yeah. strange. I feel really emotional about yeah. it. And I, we, I was working at The Sun at the time and we were all in there at 4am in the morning. Mm. And it's, it was largely men and they're all quite rough, tough. And we were all just sitting there like that and a couple mm. of them were crying oh. because she'd been so... She'd been such a superstar. Mm. She was such a devoted mother. Mm -hmm. And it was just it was just absolutely mm. heartbreaking. I think your career's been quite amazing, actually. A lot of yeah, things I didn't know. I had loads know. of things. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, no, hats off to you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Real role models. <laughs>